Hi everyone, Mary Ann Cowan here from Pinery Paper Crafts. It is Wednesday, I don't even know what the date is, um, 29th I believe of December. So 2021 is almost done. Yay! So welcome to my Facebook Live. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Ottawa, Canada. I come live Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 3 o'clock to showcase Stampin' Up! products, card ideas, and hopefully to inspire you to get creating in your craft room. So hopefully you will have some friends hopping on. On Monday, I showed you a card. I don't know what I did with it. And I couldn't remember the name of it. And it was the shuffle technique. And it was Mary Knab. I think that's how you say her name. All right, I'm just gonna see if I can get the comments. And I actually didn't really watch the video before, I just looked at her card. But I'm gonna show you how she did this technique. She calls it the stack and shuffle technique and it's a quick and easy way to make four cards so we're going to be using some new paper from celebration which is January 4th to February 28th and I hope you're getting your wish lists ready if you're one of my regular customers I'll be getting catalogs out ASAP and they will be available on my website but not until January 4th so this paper is right here actually and it's part of a bundle that you get for free. So it's a double. So when you spend $120, you can get this paper and a coordinating stamp set. I'm just gonna use the paper today. But look how beautiful it is. Uh, it's got petal pink, granny apple green, and hmm, pool party, and fresh freesia. And then the back is equally as pretty. So I tried to find some sheets that I thought would coordinate all together because I need four. So I'm going to use these four sheets and I'm going to cut them down and show you how to use them. But just a reminder that celebration does begin on January 4th and also the new catalog. So the January to June mini catalog which will have Valentine's, uh, Spring those types of celebrations and lots of other things. This rainbow set I've been using, I can't get enough of it. Also, the best deal is always the starter kit where you can choose any products, 135 in Canada, $135 worth of products for, um, no, $165 worth of products for 135. And in Ontario, there's no tax, no shipping. And during celebration, you can choose two free stamp sets from either of the catalogs. Not the host sets, but any of the other catalogs. And one of the ones I would suggest getting is this one that I've been using a lot. It's called, Spe oh, this is a celebration one, but that's a good one to get as well. That's also a double one. This one's celebrating you. It's got Father's Day, Mother's Day, Birthday, Anniversary, Love, Easter, Proud of You, happily ever after. It's just a really great general set. But you can choose any two free stamp sets. And this is the one I'm using today. It's also a celebration and it's also free with a $120 purchase in Canada. And believe me, once you see the catalog, that's easy to do. A couple of bundles and ribbons and you're there. Awesome, awesome set. All the sentiments today are from this set. Okay, those are my commercials. Let's get crafting. So I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer. And we need to start with our paper at four by five and a quarter. So it's already four. Yeah, but, and then I just need to do five and a quarter. And the Stampin' Up! paper trimmer will cut four sheets of designer series paper. So there we have those. 
And now I'm going to cut it at two and three quarters. These ones we're not using. I don't want to get them mixed up for when I do the shuffle. I'm going to turn it, landscape, and cut at three inches. You want to make sure it's pretty exact and keep them in order. So I'm just going to lay them off to the side here. The camera's over a little bit too far. So I'm going to put these ones here. And then I'm going to take my skinny ones and cut them at two inches. And I'll lay them over here as well. All right. So now I have four piles. Mary has a really good explanation on her um, YouTube page as well, but I think this is going to be the same. I had moved my stuff around. Okay, so we're going to take the first pile and we're going to shuffle. So we're just going to take the first piece and put it on the bottom. Make sure you just have one piece. Then we're going to take the next one and we're going to take one, two, shuffle twice. And for this one, we're going to t shuffle three times. One, two, three. And this one we're not shuffling. So I should have each of the different designs here ready to go. I'm going to slide them up a little bit. And then we're going to get going. So we're going to use a petal pink card base. We're going to use these beautiful new polished dots that are in the new catalog. So those will be available to purchase. They're just really, really pretty. And I'm sure you could color these white ones as well. But why? So we're going to use those. And I think I've gone ahead and done that, so I can put that away. So we're going to take our first one. She suggests using white glue, and I totally agree with her. So we're going to use white glue. That's fine. We're going to take our first one. And the reason you use white glue is you, you do have a second in case you need to move it. I'm going to put it up here. I'm not going to push down too much yet. Our next one. Uh, this one. So when I did it the other day, I had them all matching. Well, I cut, cut it differently. But I had them matching in the middle, and she didn't. And I like it better. And I knew when I did mine, it didn't look quite the same as hers, but I couldn't figure out what I had done until I went back and looked. So you want to make sure your bottoms are lined up and your tops and then you can push it down. Isn't it cool? So that's our first one. We're going to put all four of them together because they're so quick. The last one I'm going to do a little bit differently. So the glue. So you just kind of go down the line and just grab the top piece on each pile. These ones are fairly similar, so it might not show up as quite as well as if you had pattern paper that was a little bit different, like these two are fairly similar. I can do that. No, I can't, can't change it up now. Hopefully that's the FedEx guy just leaving a parcel. Okay, that looks good. Okay. 
Right, next one. And ah. oh, I thought I was missing one. This cut this paper's really pretty too. We'll go back and add all the sentiments and everything in a second. Let's just get this paper done. So you can see how quickly you can come up with a little set of cards. We're actually going to make this into a little set that you can give as a gift. Uh, another thing I have coming up on oh, my Monday oh, Facebook Live, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a catalog launch. So on, oh no, I can't do it on Monday. On Monday, I'll show some products because I can't show inside the catalog quite yet. Okay, so for this one, I have white card base and then I have petal pink that's four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And I'll show you why I want to do this because I want to add a ribbon to this one. We have this beautiful petal pink ribbon that I just love. Okay, so this one we might need. I was wondering about this bird that is now sideways. But this card we can just have so that it goes sideways. So this one's a little bit of a tighter fit. because I did trim it down from what the other one was. Hmm. Should have put it a little closer to the edge. Forgot about that. Well, you get the idea. I'll show you why I did it like this. Because I want to be able to put this on here, but I want to use ribbon. And you can't really use ribbon when you just have all your loose pieces. So, because of the bird, I'm going to have this one go like this. So let's get our ribbon scissors. Because really, you can put the card whichever way you want. I'm going to grab my stamp and Seal Plus. Okay. It's been tearing my paper. I think it's user error. So we'll use tear and tape. I don't know if I'm actually live today. I can't see the comments. It says I'm live. Hopefully, I'm not just sitting here talking to myself. So I always like to push one over and then we'll turn it over and make sure this is straight. All right, that looks good. So I should have adjusted when I put my paper on for the very first piece. I forgot that this was a little bit smaller, but that's okay. I don't think anyone's going to notice. They're just going to notice how pretty it looks. Because I was lazy and I didn't want to cut down all my pieces of paper. Okay, so we've got that one. So for this one, I think this would be a nice sympathy card. And for those ones, yeah, I do have a piece of vellum to put underneath. And then I'm going to tie a little knot there. Yeah, I think that'll be pretty. So let's glue this together so that we're going to hide the glue when we attach it. Anyone else in their craft room today? It's actually beautiful here in Ottawa. Now the one thing about when you attach it with to ribbon, you get this thing happening, so I always put a glue dot, or I could have put some glue down underneath that because you wouldn't have seen it. But I'm just going to put a little glue dot under my ribbon. And that usually solves the problem. And then I'm going to see if I left enough space to tie just a knot here. This ribbon is so pretty. I was so happy that it carried over. 
Now I want the tails going this way, so that's why I'm doing it, I'm tying it from this side. If I tied it this way, the tails would go the wrong way. And this is fairly big ribbon, so I'm going to have to do some tacking with my glue dots. So the thing about glue dots is you can get your ribbon to go exactly where you want it. So I want it more like there. And that one I don't mind if it goes like that. All right, let's add a couple of polished dots. These are really pretty. They are quite substantial in size, so they'll work for a lot of different things. All right, so there's our first card with Sympathy. And I'm going to put them in a little box. Here's our next one. So I have two with the vellum, and the other one I did was Happy Birthday. Where does it open? Yeah, I think right there is good. And you could add a bow to this one. Well, you could add a ribbon. The reason I did this one with the extra layers to get a piece of ribbon, or well, it's impossible, around four loose pieces of paper. Well, maybe you could do it. It would be tricky. And I used black ink for these ones because this does have black accents in the paper. So I think I'll do, sometimes I like doing one big and one little one on each side. They are so pretty. Okay, so there's our second card. Happy birthday. I'm making a little set. Then I have, where would I be without a friend like you? And if you're giving this little pack of cards to a friend, I'm sure they would really love that. So these ones I'm just putting on straight up white. And maybe to the side. A couple of embellishments or polished dots, I should say. They're so soft and subtle. Okay, there's the third card. And we've got one more. Thanks for brightening up my day. So if you were giving this as a little gift to someone, maybe to send you flowers or brought you homemade soup. Or you know what? Just called you on the phone. Doesn't even need, need to have to be any, doesn't have to be anything big to brighten up your day, especially nowadays. Any new, any good news brightens up your day. All right. I wonder if we could add maybe just a little knot to the bottom. This ribbon is quite big. So it's a little trickier to use. Sometimes you have to kind of manipulate it a little bit to get it exactly how you want it. I actually don't like that, so it's not going on. I'm just going to stick to polished dots. I really like this paper, though. And it's these prints are soft enough that you could stamp right on the paper. Okay. Thanks for brightening my day. Where would I be without a friend like you? I'm trying to show you all the patterns. Happy birthday. With sympathy. So there we have our four cards. And I think that would be really fun to give to somebody. So I'm going to take one of our clear acetate card boxes. They come in packs of 10. 
I use these a lot, especially at Christmas when I'm giving a gift to somebody. A little pack of handmade cards is a beautiful gift. Now you could get fancy and fancy up your envelopes, but for the sake of today, I'm just going to put them all in. And these are things that a happy birthday card, a sympathy card, thanks for brightening my day, just great general cards that I think someone would appreciate. And this one I'm going to put backwards on the back so that you can see front and back. I'm just going to tuck that in. So that will go on the back of our little box of cards. It holds four quite easily and these ones don't have a ton of height to them so it's perfect. Now sometimes to get it past that little thing at the bottom you just need to push. There we go. What's on the front? I was going to say either one of these would be nice for the next stage which is the ribbon. So again we're going to take this beautiful ribbon but I'm going to tie it in a nice bow. I went ahead and cut out a tag, petal pink and one in white. And we're going to add that to the front. Or you know what, that, that's even pretty just like it is. But I made the tag so I'm going to attach it. And I do want to tie a bow so I'm going to put it a little bit bigger. I'm going to put it to the side. I think I'm going to add this with some twine. No, this is not twine. It's linen thread. If you're commenting, I apologize. I haven't answered any because I can't see the comments. I had to restart my phone because it, Facebook wasn't letting me pop it up. It's kind of a tech thing today. But that's okay. We got the project done. Okay, so now I'm going to tuck this inside. And then I will do my bow. This ribbon makes beautiful bows. They're just kind of big for cards, I find. But really pretty for packaging. I'll trim these. All right, and there you have it. A beautiful little gift box of cards using the stack and shuffle technique by Mary. Now her name is spelled, I might be pronouncing it wrong, it's K-N-A-B-E. And she used different papers than I did. So if you go, every paper that you use, the cards look a bit different. So there we go. And there's the back. Okay. Thanks for joining me today. I do appreciate it. If you like or share my video, if you're watching the replay on YouTube, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so that you will know when I post a new video. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Uh, I will be back on Friday, even though it's New Year's Eve. I'm not going anywhere. And Friday is Fun Fold Friday. So thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you on Friday. Have a great evening.